We are neither nutritionists or medical providers. The topics discussed on this show are from our own research and experiences. Please consult your medical provider before attempting anything discussed on this show. Welcome to another episode of Shogren Strong. Strong. This is Brian. And this is Lupe. And this is your weekly show discussing on how to live an active and healthy lifestyle despite having a diagnosis of Sjogren Syndrome. And to kick off this episode, I want to give a shout out to my Fitbit uh, challenge gals. Um, Heather, thank you so much for this awesome idea to get this challenge going. Um, It really keeps me moving. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Stephanie and and Kirsten have joined as well. And it's been fun because, you know, sometimes you're kind of sitting down and you look down at your watch and you're like, oh, shoot, I'm in last place. So you kind of start walking a little bit. So it's been fun. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. (laughs) The the dogs are even a little upset at you because I told them. I told them it was you. (laughs) Because uh, I'm like, come on, Brian, let's go walking or... Uh, we got to go shopping and run our errands. Uh, that's why I've been, um, I had a lot of steps this, this weekend because we run a lot of errands. Sorry, Brian, keep up. Good times. Try to keep up, Brian. Good times. Girls rule. All right. And to the winners of our Sjogren's Strong giveaway, you already have received your books and the mugs should be shipping this week. And as soon as I get tracking information, I will get that forwarded to you. And they do take a little longer than the books. We'd really love to hear your feedback on the book. Hopefully you get as much out of it as I did. Before I purchased this book, I think I had like maybe 15 or 20. And this is the one that was written in such a way that I understood. Um, It didn't have so many medical terms. So anyways, I hope it helps you out. All right, now on to the meat of today's show, pun intended. But um bum. We had a listener ask Lupe, how and where are you getting your protein in your diet if you're not eating meat? Well, I actually never really thought about it that way, but um I believe I've been getting my proteins from from the greens that I've been eating, such as my veggies, um, I've been eating a lot of Brussels sprouts, string beans, pinto beans, black beans. Couscous and quinoa. And, and the beans, the black beans and the pinto beans are where the majority of the protein is coming from. Plus, you have a protein shake every morning. I do have a protein shake. And, you know, the protein shake that I drank in the morning, I never thought of it as getting protein. It's more of so I could ha- drink liquids and stay hydrated. And also the main reason for me having a shake in the morning is because I like adding all the anti-inflammatory ingredients that I want to consume daily in there. So yeah, she's adding her turmeric and her ginger and her thyme and cardamom and I'm sure a few other things. I also add my glucosamine and maca powder, but recently I added um, acai powder. It changes the taste. I'm really enjoying the acai. Yeah, I'm sure it's a little better than all of that mixed together. Yeah, and you add your chia seeds. My chia seeds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also put fiber in it, so that helps. With all of this vegetable-based protein and all of the fiber that you're consuming throughout the day, digestion has been so much better. Um, Her brain fog is pretty much gone. It seems like her vocabularies come back because she's not struggling for words. And I'm sure you guys, and I think my opinion, something we haven't really talked about. I think when the brain fogs really kicked in, she, I don't know, for lack of a better term, dumbs everything down because she doesn't want to struggle to look for a word that she knows. And I start using sign language as well. And you know what I've noticed? Um, and I don't know if this happens to anybody, but for me, when I started losing my words, I kind of became an, an introvert. And I I didn't want to, like if we would go to restaurants or wherever, I didn't really feel comfortable speaking to the server or just anywhere we went. And lately, 
because my brain fog is gone, I feel more comfortable talking to people. You know, I feel like I used to, what's the word I'm looking for, Paps? I think that confidence is back, that yeah. you're, you're not going to struggle looking for words and, and you, you know you have a confidence that you can communicate effectively. That's the word I was looking for, confidence, speaking of brain fog. Um, I, I lost my confidence when I came down with Sjogren's, when I was diagnosed with Sjogren's. Because of the brain fog, I didn't want to talk to people. And Brian w- would order and do all the talking for me. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I'm a big girl. I can speak, you know, so I've noticed that. Yeah, she used to think it was cool that I ordered for her. I was being all gentlemanly, and now it's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I can order my own food. You don't have to order for me. How the times have changed. The tables have turned. Yep. Now I'm ordering for him, and he's like, what? So, as stated at the beginning of this episode, we are not nutritionists. We are not medical professionals. We. We took one class of nutrition. That's it. We did take a nutrition class, and. We were fortunate that Dr. Reba really appreciated and would recommend and help us consider holistic approaches to handling the symptoms of Sjogren's and other things. But jump online, do some research. If you have a great nutritionist, awesome. Share that wealth of info with us. But you can jump online and do research and don't just take the first thing that pops up. Make sure it's a reputable site, WebMD. Um, the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration has a great website with nutritional information. Read nutrition labels and start, just pick one or two items that are in your diet that you know should not be there. And Remove them and add something healthier for you. Something with anti-inflammatory properties. Um, Vegetable-based, if you can. And see how that feels. I think we've mentioned this in the past, but don't remove 10 things out of your diet at once. Do it maybe one or two at a time, preferably one, because then you'll know if if you feel better or worse with that one food, because if you remove five items from your diet, you you don't know which one's making you feel good or bad or whatnot. So it's always a good idea, one thing at a time. Look, everyone would like a magic pill that will take our pain away. And some meds work better than others. But I prefer feeling better because of the foods I'm eating and not because of the meds I'm taking. So listen to your body and seek the counsel of a nutritionist if you think it'll help you and slowly figure out what's making you feel better and what's making you feel worse. Until next time, sip constantly and stay hydrated.